Welcome to the Summer Vibes series. These beginner videos are designed to help new users learn the basics of Marvelous Designer. In this tutorial, we will make the swimsuit. First, import your avatar into the workspace. Today we will be using Hannah by going to the library, avatar, stylized, and double click on Hannah to import her into the workspace. Using the default settings, you can right click to rotate in the 3D space and use the scroll wheel to scroll in and out for viewing. I will close my library window by clicking on that X button because I don't need it anymore. We will use her shadow in the 2D window on the right as a reference to create our base swimsuit. Going up to the 2D toolbar, we have the pattern shape tools here. The polygon tool is what we're going to use, which is the H hotkey. How to use the tool with the default settings is left click once to create segment points, backspace to undo, hold control and click to create curve points, hold shift to create lines along specific angles, and press escape if you need to restart. For this, we're going to be making a one-piece swimsuit. Using the center line, start at the neckline, holding control to make a curve point, and going up past her shoulders here to create the strap. From there, going at a bit of an angle to follow her shoulder, and then holding control again as we create the curve for the underarm. Make sure as you're creating this curve to go past the shadow, and release control to create that corner. Following her shape from her waist to her hips with just a segment point and creating the curve for that hip. You can reference the undergarments shape that is on the avatar's texture if you want for this portion, but make sure to follow down past the center so you can accommodate the rise of her seat. You can see me extend past at the center and meet on that center line. Once I'm done with that, I will close my polygon and I will have my pattern appear in the 3D and 2D window. Once closed, it has a white color as it appears in the space. I like to toggle off this in case I have overlapping patterns by going up to the 2D toolbar and choosing transparent surface. Next, we do need a back piece, so right click your pattern and choose copy or control C and right click and I like to choose mirror paste. So I have my back pattern piece. The back is going to be similar, but it's not going to be exactly the same as the front. If you need to, you can select your patterns in the 3D space with the left mouse click and move it. To make adjustments to the pattern, I'm going to pop out the Edit Pattern Tools. We're going to use the Edit Pattern Tool specifically, or the Z hotkey. Selecting my segment line, I'm going to unfold the front pattern piece across the center so we can see how this looks at this stage of the workflow. Using the Edit Pattern tool, right-click on the center line on the front pattern and unfold with symmetric editing. For the center back, our pattern shape may change, so we're going to right-click the pattern and choose Duplicate with symmetric editing and sewing. We can sew our patterns together next using the sewing tools and specifically the segment sewing tool. We'll sew the center backs together, the sides to each other, making sure not to cross our segment lines, and the rise. I have forgotten the shoulder, I'll show you why. To place it on the avatar, we'll go to the 3D window and go up to the 3D toolbar avatar options and turn on the arrangement points. These blue dots are the arrangement points. Selecting our pattern in the 3D window, clicking on it, and then selecting the arrangement points, we can easily and quickly place our pattern around our avatar. So make sure to place your front on the front and the backs on the back. Using the 3D space as a reference, I can see I forgot the shoulders, so I'm going to use the segment sewing tool again to sew the shoulders together. Once I'm happy with how my sewing looks, I will just use the space bar to simulate. You can also check how it's fitting by grabbing the garment in the 3D window while you're simulating to pull on the garment and see where some problem areas might be. For mine, I'd like to make the shoulder area a little bit further outward from the center and to make the center back neck lower and adjust her center waist. We can see there's a bit of a gap there because of the extra material. This is because of the shape of our avatar and how she's standing. Her front has a different shape from the back, so this can be expected. Starting with that center back excess, we can use the slash and spread tool for this. This line needs to be made shorter, so we can do that using this tool. Slash and spread basically does what it sounds like. It lets you slash something and spread it out or spread it inward. So selecting the outer side seam first and then going towards the center back line, I'm going to select the top piece when it gives me the option, and then I'm just going to move it inward. This will help reduce the length only in that spot. 
This is also why we kept the back pieces separated in case we needed to do this type of edit. Staying on the back, we're going to adjust the seat of this swimsuit. The seat of this swimsuit is showing the underwear texture that's on my avatar, and I would like to just cover that. Using the Z hotkey for the edit pattern tools and also using the edit curvature tools, I'm just going to reshape the back to hide that undergarment that's on her texture. The crotch width is also a little too narrow on my pattern, so I'm going to widen it using the edit pattern tool by just clicking and dragging on those segment points. As you're working, make sure to simulate so you can see how it's looking. Once I'm happy with that curve on the back, I will move to the hip curve that leads into the center front curve. I can see already that my center front is pretty narrow, still I haven't fixed it, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust that curve shape as well. Adjust the look of the curve using the Edit Curve Point tool. We are aiming for a nice, clean slope across the avatar's body in the 3D window. Go ahead and finish editing your curve so that it has a smooth transition from the front pattern to the back pattern. Moving to the upper torso area, she has a large chest that is pushing on the pattern, and we want to cover that up so it doesn't look funny. Using the edit pattern tools, we're going to adjust that curve that goes from the strap to her underarm. Before we do that, we can also see if a quick fix would be elastic value on those lines. Using shift to select the neckline and the underarm line, we can go to the property editor and toggle on elastic. Now its default is 80% and I don't like the 80% value. We will make this 95% since it tends to look a little bit better on my pattern here. In real life, there's often elastic here or a binding that will stretch a little bit less than normal swimsuits so we can get away with elastic. Applying the elastic did not completely resolve the shape issue so we're going to use the edit curve point tool again and adjust the strap shape. The side seam is determining the shape so I just need to make it less of an arrow and more of a square for both the front and the back. Once done with that first edit, I can simulate and see how the changes affected the pattern. The shoulder strap is also pretty close to her neck, so I want to pull this outward with the edit tool. For the straps, your front torso may look a little bit different, so adjust until you're happy with the look. Looking at the side of her swimsuit, I don't like the seam that is creating this S curve. This is because her chest is quite large compared to her waist. To accommodate for this, we're going to grab the segment point that's on the underarm and pull it out straight to the right. This will help adjust for the bust size without us having to do too much work. If you want to adjust the neckline, we can just pull down that center front point on the neck. Make sure to adjust the curve points so that your shape is smooth. The most important part in these edits is that the shapes are smooth where they connect across sewing lines or across mirror lines. Because we made changes to the front shoulders, we're going to need to make them to the back shoulders as well. So taking a look at the back pattern again, I do want this to look more like a swimsuit that you can step into instead of a racer back. I need to adjust the shoulders further out from the center and lower the back center curve. Using the X hotkey to move the strap horizontally towards the side and using the V hotkey to make the armhole a bit smaller. Remember to simulate as you're working to see how it's looking. Once I'm done with the shoulders, I'm going to move on to the back center neck. I need to lower it along that center line, but I don't want to adjust the curve. And when I use only the Z hotkey, it does affect the curve of that back. To prevent this, hold the D key on your keyboard to only move that segment point. This does mean you need to adjust and change the neck curve on the back, but that's fine. Just use the V hotkey to add more curve points or move the existing ones. Here's where you want to keep playing around with it until you like how it looks. This may not have happened to you, but check your shoulders. If your patterns are creating sharp corner angles, adjust them so that they are creating a straight angle across as best you can on your avatar's shoulders. I also don't like where it's hitting on my avatar's shoulder because it's hitting her in the front of her torso instead of on the top of her shoulder. So I'm increasing the front length and reducing the back length but double check your work and make sure that you're applying elastic values back on those lines when you make those changes. And lastly, because I've adjusted my pattern, I do need to adjust the neckline again. I don't like how it's fitting her, so I'm just going to adjust that center front a little bit lower. And this is the base swimsuit done. It fits my stylized avatar. Next, we're going to start doing the styling for her and editing the base swimsuit for the final render. I will change her hair first to be something else. To reopen my library, I can go to the bottom right-hand corner and click the arrow in a circle button, 
that'll bring up my library window again. Going up to Avatar, Stylized, and then picking Hair, I'm just going to give her the red by double-clicking it. I'm only doing this because the other avatar in the scene is also Hannah. This is my very base swimsuit pattern, and I do want to do one more thing, which is adjust the side seam. Taking it from a harsh corner and turning it into a smooth curve using the Smooth Curve tool. By selecting the segment point, I'm just going to click it and drag. And do so to the front and the back. It doesn't have to be perfect. Pulling at it a bit so I can check the fit, and also while it's simulating, I can use Strengthen, or the hotkey is Control h which turns my pattern orange, and I can make sure that it's fitting and laying on my avatar how I want it before I save this final item. Remember to save your original item, so go up to File, Save As, Project, and name it Swimsuit if you'd like. I'm just going to save another copy of the same thing because I've done this a couple of times. For the final step, working in Marvelous Designer, I'm going to add some simple color blocking to this design and change the shoulders to be asymmetrical. Starting with the shoulder on the back pattern, using the internal polygon tools, create a straight line from the underarm to the center back as the guideline. For this to be asymmetrical, we will only cut off one of them, and I'm going to do the left side. But we can see that the line was applied to the other pattern as well. Since this will be asymmetrical, we need to remove the linked editing from the patterns. To remove linked editing from both patterns at once, hold Shift and select the front and the back pieces, right-click and choose Remove Linked Editing. Now that they are no longer linked across the center front or across each other, going to the center front pattern, create a line from the center front point neck to the underarm that will be on the left worn side. Once the lines are in place, using Z, right-click on the internal lines for both the front and the back and select Cut. Then delete the strap parts. On the back side, I also want this to be straight, so I will delete the extra segment points by selecting and deleting them with the delete key. We no longer have an elastic value across those lines because we cut those pieces off. So let's reapply that elastic value by selecting those lines again and applying 95% elastic. Now that the straps are done, let's do the internal shapes. We did internal shapes in the 2D window, but we can also make them in the 3D window. Using the 3D line tools in the 3D window, select the Line 3D Pattern tool. This allows you to draw directly on the patterns in the 3D window. This tool operates with the same functions as the Edit Pattern tool. Click once to start and hold Shift as you rotate around the avatar to create a straight line along the garment or the topology of your avatar. And for this one, the difference is double click to complete. Make sure that you connect the endpoints of the line to each other. Once you complete the line, you'll notice that it's a bit curved in the 2D window where it looks straight in the 3D window. And that's why we drew this in the 3D window because we want it to be straight on the body, not on the pattern. Once you're done with this line, use the Edit Line 3D Pattern tool to double click that line that you made so that it's highlighted. Right click it in the 3D window and choose Convert to Internal Shape. You can now edit as necessary in the 2D window but if you're happy with the shape and it is a closed line, you can now select Cut and Sew in the 2D window. And that's how you use the tool. I'm going to go back and start making some of my cutouts. You can follow along with me, but you don't have to. I'm just going to create one more, clicking again with that same line tool on the side seam as best I can, and using Control to make a curve point, I'm just going to make it on the opposite side of the cutout shoulder and convert that to an internal shape one more time. While the internal line is now highlighted, go to the 2D window and right-click, choose Cut and Sew. Feel free to make any more edits. I'm going to finish here, but go ahead and keep working, and make sure to simulate as you work. Once you are happy with your design, we can move on to the fabric. We will use at least two fabrics in the scene, so refreshing so that we have our library back, go up to the Substance folder, select Nylon Trico Mesh, which is a bright purple. This is basically swimsuit mesh. To apply this to your scene, drag and drop onto the swimsuit to apply the fabric. Once applied, you can see it in the 3D window as well as in the fabric window in the top right hand corner. Next we need the second material or the contrast material, so I'm going to go to the fabric folder next. Turn on the list view, and I can pick kind of any of the knits. I like the cotton jersey, and this time instead of dragging and dropping onto the fabric, I'm going to drag and drop into the fabric window. 
Holding shift, select all of the pieces that you want this new fabric to be placed on, and you can drag and drop onto those pieces, or you can use the arrow button in the fabric window. Next, we need to change these colors. I'm going to do black and red. So picking the mesh first with the double click in that fabric window, going down to the custom properties in the property editor and changing the purple to a black color. Then selecting OK and going to the knit jersey and double clicking, going to the property editor and then going to materials and I'll just pick a red. Once I'm done with my colors, the last step really is to reduce the particle distance from 20 down to five if I wanted the most accurate. But for now, she's stylized, it looks fine on her. I'm just going to reduce it to 15 and then simulate it in place. You can now save and export this project for render in your preferred 3D package. Check out the other Summer Vibes tutorial videos on how to make more of the assets seen in this render.